This is a very large early season wild parsnip plant. If you see this plant, don't touch it. It is an invasive species similar to giant hogweed that will give you a really nasty photochemical burn if you get its sap on your skin and are then exposed to sunlight. So these are kind of a pain to get rid of. I have another video with more details about how to remove them. This video is going to be focused more on finding them. But long story short, these plants like to grow on edges. So you can see I am on a mowed trail here and they don't grow right in the middle of your lawn where you usually mow your grass because they don't get a chance to get established and they don't really grow in the woods or under large trees where they have a lot of competition for light but they kind of like to grow right on that border where they can get established and then also have enough sunlight to grow this is why many times you'll see them all over the place on roadways along highways where they can spread easily and late season mowing when they have gone to seed can actually make the problem worse and spread the seeds everywhere. Now I am a mechanical engineer, not a botanist, so if you follow my channel for electronics tutorials and you're wondering why is this guy talking about plants, and it's just because I live on this large rural plot in upstate New York and I kind of enjoy learning about nature stuff on my way as I walk around this trail on my property. So what's really interesting to me about these plants, and maybe somebody who knows way more about plants than I do can leave a comment kind of helping explain this, is just how vastly different the growth can be at the same point in the season. So you see this one is enormous, a few feet tall, and then right across the way, just a few feet across on the other side of this path, I have a much smaller one kind of hidden down in the grass here. Now these are, I believe it's called biennial or biannual or something plants that kind of have a two-phase growth where the first year there is a much smaller growth called a rosette and then the second year there's a taller plant that will flower and go to seed and after that the plant dies but of course it's spread a ton of seeds everywhere so you have a persistent problem. So again the same time of year, I think it's June 5th or so, see if I can get both of these in the same shot there. Got that really tiny one over on the left and then the huge one over on the right, which makes it kind of annoying for finding these things because you kind of calibrate yourself to look for a certain size plant or one height, and then you can find another tiny little one like this hiding somewhere. So again, I go over this in more detail in the other video, which I'll link in the description, but in short, if you have an isolated plant like this, the easiest way to get rid of it is to pull it out and make sure you get the root. You wanna wear gloves and long sleeves when you do that so you don't get it on your skin. But I found that if you just cut them, especially early in the season like this, before they've gone to seed and you don't get the root, they will just come back and you won't solve your problem because you'll just have more seeds later in the season. So for a single, large, isolated plant like that, if it's huge and the root is deep, you might actually need a shovel to dig it up, but you're going to want to pull it out. For little ones like this that are kind of part of a large grassier patch, you might want to think about mowing instead. I've walked a few feet down my trail here. You can see how there are some other ones mixed in with the grass and I've kind of got this large grassy patch where the harder I look, the more of them I find mixed in there. So this is something where it's gonna be kind of a pain to hunt them down individually because especially early in the season before they've flowered, so they have a bright yellow flower that can make them easier to spot. Later in the season, it's hard to find them when they're just mixed in with a ton of green. So for example, there's another one right there that is just kind of the same height as the surrounding grass. And if I zoom in, you can actually see the white foamy sap on there, which is what you really don't want to get on your skin. There's another one there. So when they are that kind of camouflaged and mixed in, this is an example where I might be better off just mowing that patch. Here is another one that you can see has sprung up to be taller than the surrounding grass and is now just starting to develop the flowers on the top. So I could wade through here and try to pluck them out individually, but in my experience, there's always one more that you didn't see. So when you have a patch this big, you are better off preemptively mowing, but you have to make sure you do it early before they go to seed. Because again, if they have seeds and you mow, you're just gonna spread the seeds everywhere and make the problem worse. If you mow once, you are then going to need to keep mowing throughout the season to prevent them from ever coming back and establishing themselves to the point where they get seeds. Again, if I look out, just in my yard, I don't have them growing in the middle of my yard because I, I mow that frequently enough that they never get established. But if I just mow this once at the beginning of the season and then leave it all summer, they're gonna come back. Just going along the trail, here's another one again that's more than waist high, about three, three and a half feet high 
on me, kind of hiding right on the edge there, but easy to spot and pull out. This is a patch that I have mowed before. I've been mowing consistently for a few years, and a lot of the big ones are not there, but again, if I look, I just spotted one from a distance. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Right there is a little one hiding. So then again, not really taller than the surrounding grass, so harder to spot. So I'm probably gonna come in and mow this patch again preemptively rather than, yep, there's another little one, rather than trying to hunt them down individually in here. And finally, these are the ones that I hate the most and you kind of have to watch out for. I don't know if you can even see that on camera. You see from a distance, you can barely spot it. This one is growing sort of inside a bush and this is woody vegetation that it's growing over with a thick enough trunk that I'm not going to be able to just run that over with my mower. So again, I've got to kind of wear gloves and long sleeves and go in there and yank that big one out and then here's another one that's less than half the size just a couple feet away from it so again i have never found these things deep in the woods we live in a meadow kind of backing up to woods and i've never found them just randomly growing in the middle there under thick tree cover but they will kind of grow under a bush like this i think i found that they get started very early in the season so before the many of the bushes have leaves so maybe they just kind of get a head start on the sunlight and are able to get established instead of being blocked out by the canopy there and again those ones are kind of the most dangerous because they're the hardest to spot here's another little one out on the edge that's probably close enough that i could mow that one but i'm never going to be able to mow the one that's really tight in there so i've got all of these different bushes where i kind of try to mow tightly around them but can't get all the way in up against them so i'm going to have to go around and pick all those out manually so okay that is the walking tour of wild parsnip on my property hopefully this has been useful to you if you are also trying to figure out how and where to spot the stuff. Um, again, if you are a real botanist or gardener or something and actually know more about plants than I do, uh, please go ahead and leave any helpful comments below this video. And if something is particularly useful, I will pin it. So if you're watching, go ahead and check out the comments too. Thank you.